Buenos días a todas y todos. Hi everyone, welcome on this webinar co-organized by LIBER, UNESCO La Referencia. Hoy en día vamos a hablar en este webinar uh, del monitoreo de la ciencia abierta en Europa. We are going to talk today about the open science monitoring in Europe. This webinar is translated. You can click on the button to get the Spanish channel. Para tener la interpretación en español, puede apoyar, apoyar sobre el botón de, uh, que está um, en la parte baja de su pantalla. Um, today, we are going to have a webinar that will take inspiration from the similarities between Latin America and European approaches to open science. There is a study, you receive the link and to get uh, insight on this. And um, before we start the webinar, I'm going to give um, small housekeeping rules and then we will get started. So you can answer and ask your questions and have a discussion in the chat or use the Q&A box. So please put your question. We will have a Q&A session at the end of the presentations. And we will stop recording the webinar right now. Um, today on the program, we will have first some introduction and welcoming words from Andrea Mora, President de la Referencia, and Julien Roche, Liber President, Liber being the association for um, the League for European Libraries, uh, Research Libraries in Europe. Then we will have a series of presentations starting by Anna Persik. Program Specialist for Science, Technology and Innovation Policies and Open Science at the UNESCO headquarters about the UNESCO monitoring framework. Then we will hear Eloy Rodriguez, Director of the University of Mino in Portugal. He will be speaking for open air about the state of the art, open science monitoring methods and tools and will present the open air, open science monitor. Then we will be very happy to hear Leticia Bracco from France with a French focus on behalf of Marin Dacos, the counselor for open science at the Ministry of Higher Education and Research about our national open science monitoring tool, Le Baromètre de la Science Ouverte. Then we will end with uh, Sami Ninimaki from Finland, who is counselor for open science in Finland at the Ministry of Higher uh, Education and Culture and he will provide us with a Finnish focus about the National Open Science Monitoring in Finland. Have a set of Q&A session, and then uh, we will say goodbye on the concluding remarks by Julien Roche, uh, Liber President. So we will start now and do not delay uh, longer the beginning of this webinar with Andrea Mora. Andrea Mora, you are the La Referencia President. Over to you. Bienvenidos y bienvenidas a este seminario web organizado por LIBER, UNESCO y La Referencia. La Referencia de la Red de Repositorios de, de Acceso Abierto de Latinoamérica. Es una red eh, liderada por gobiernos de Latinoamérica. En primer lugar, quiero agradecer a todas las personas de LIBER, UNESCO y La Referencia que han colaborado para hacer este evento posible. También quiero agradecer a todas las iniciativas que están presentando su trabajo hoy, al equipo de la UNESCO con quienes ya estamos colaborando activamente respecto de las recomendaciones de la UNESCO para la ciencia abierta y la implementación en los países, a Open Aire, un importante referente global y amigo de la referencia de sus comienzos, al Ministerio de Educación Superior de e Investigación de Francia, que está colaborando con la referencia a través de SCOS, al Ministerio de Educación, Cultura y fin de Finlandia, de quien esperamos aprender mucho hoy. Nuestro objetivo al pensar este seminario es ofrecer a nuestras comunidades de personas bibliotecarias, investigadoras y gestoras de políticas públicas y por supuesto que a todas las personas actoras del ecosistema de ciencia abierta, un breve resumen de los métodos y herramientas de seguimiento de la ciencia abierta desarrollados actualmente en Europa. Desde Latinoamérica y el Caribe esperamos aprender mucho hoy y también enriquecer con nuestra realidad diversa la discusión sobre cómo monitorear las políticas de ciencia abierta 
a nivel nacional, regional y global, siempre con una perspectiva de acceso abierto, no comercial y considerando a los resultados de investigación financiada con fondos públicos como un bien público. Desde Latinoamérica estamos realizando con la UNESCO, como lo dije anteriormente, el levantamiento de todas las iniciativas que ya se están ejecutando a nivel de gobierno y que pretenden eh, implementar las recomendaciones de la, un, sobre ciencia abierta de la UNESCO y la idea es pronto liberarlas para que todas las personas las vean. Muchísimas gracias por su atención y esperamos que le saquen mucho provecho a este webinar. Every scientific language, not only English. Can Europe, North America, Asia, South America achieve that goal on their own? Certainly not. The reason is today, no area in the world is publishing more than 25% of the total amount of scientific publications. No area is strong enough to decide on its own where we should be heading. And that's a very good thing. So in that context, a webinar like the one you are attending today is the perfect illustration of what we need to do, gathering free organizing structures. An internal organization, an international organization, sorry, UNESCO, that did a lot since 2019, preparing the open science recommendation we all know. It did really help putting open science in the agenda of many countries through the world, where the open science topic was not yet on the agenda of decision makers. La referencia the most important Latin American network of open access repositories that has been able to make most Southern and Central America players work together to deliver the services needed by the, academy, by the academic community at the relevant scale, which is an impressive success story indeed. And LIBER, the largest network of research libraries in Europe, open science is part of our roadmap since many years, and our new strategy is to take open science to the next level. I want to take the opportunity to thank all higher education and research libraries for the efforts they do since many years to develop, sustain, implement, monitor, and steer open science, and remind that everywhere open science is happening in Europe, research libraries are key players. A few words about the topic of our webinar today. It is a rather new topic compared to the other aspects of open science. As a matter of fact, the scientific community started to open science before considering how to measure and monitor this openness of scholarly results and scholarly communication. As I said before, in many areas in the world, we are now mature enough to evaluate and monitor our open science policies and actions at several levels. Institutional, in Europe, from where I speak, many universities have developed their own open science monitor and elaborated it from a basis of shared methods and criteria. National, we'll have two speakers today illustrating that on behalf of the French Ministry for Higher Education and Research on one hand, and the Finnish Ministry for Higher Education and Research on the other hand. Regional, open air is indeed an important player there. We will soon hear about that today. And of course, the global one with the UNESCO monitoring framework. So let's now listen to our speakers and meet again after the presentation to start a conversation all together. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Julien, um, for your welcoming words. Uh, we are going to start the uh, discussions. I can repeat that you can follow the translation by pushing on the button. Uh, puedes seguir la traducción pulsando el botón situado en la parte inferior de la pantalla. So you can follow either in English or in Spanish. Um, we are going to um, uh, hear now Ana Persic who is Program Specialist for Science, Technology and Innovation Policies and Open Science at the UNESCO headquarters. Hi, Anna, welcome. Over to you. What are you going to talk about? 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Cecile. And thank you um, all for organizing this exchange and for uh, allowing us all to have this space to see a little bit what we are doing in different regions and at different levels and how we can best learn from each other in creating of a monitoring framework that really caters uh, to look into not just what the outputs of open science are, but also what the impacts of open science are. So my presentation is going to be on what are our current efforts at the international level in terms of establishing a global monitoring framework for uh, open science. And of course, in particular, we we'll look into the monitoring of the implementation of the UNESCO recommendation on open science as the starting point for our monitoring framework. So I will share my screen. And, and, and first, I, I would like to um, just have a, a couple of minutes to um, introduce why open science is important at the international level. Of course, we very much appreciate um, the benefits that open science can have to advance science and scientific collaborations, access to scientific information. But we also see a lot of different benefits really with regards to global benefits and the role of open science as a tool to promote science as global public good that will also be extremely important for the achievement of global goals, such as the sustainable development goals, which really do require an efficient, equitable, transparent, collaborative and inclusive science, because we do need sustainable solutions and innovative solutions from local to international levels to the different challenges that the world is facing. We also see open science as a very, um, a uh, very important tool to fulfill the human right to science. We have the Article 27 of the Universal Declaration on Human Rights, which states that everyone has the right to freely share in scientific advancement and its benefits. And we do see the importance of this um, article uh, more and more in today's world. And we saw its importance also during the, the COVID-19 pandemics, for example. And of course, we do need science that is more connected to societal needs, more accessible for all. We need the scientific literacy of our populations also to ensure that decisions that are taken, including on international level, are taken based on, on scientific evidence. And there is absolutely need to bridge the knowledge and technology gaps between and within countries. And again, we see in open science a potential tool to do that. But of course, for open science to do all this, what was important was to have at the international level a common definition of open science, a shared set of values and principles, and there was a need for this international policy and action uh, framework, which we didn't have until 2021, when the UNESCO recommendation on open science was adopted. So. These recommendations of UNESCO are not binding as conventions, but are, they are still quite powerful. They're powerful because there are legal instruments which formulate principles and norms for international regulation of a certain issue, in this case, open science. And then really member states are invited to take legislative or other steps to be able to implement these instruments. And they're also required to uh, report back to UNESCO on the progress made every four years. So there is a reporting mechanism that is quite important and, and countries need to engage in it. So when we look into the monitoring of open science, when we look into the monitoring of the open science recommendation, we do have to remind ourselves of this definition of these shared values that have been defined in the recommendation and the actions um, and the actions that are proposed in the recommendation. So in terms of the definition, we look into open science as a very broad and comprehensive concept uh, that increases scientific collaboration and sharing of information for the benefits of science and society, makes multilingual scientific knowledge openly available, accessible, reusable for all, but also opens the processes of scientific knowledge creation, evaluation and communication to actors that are beyond the traditional scientific community. So the idea really is that open science opens science 
um, among scientists from different disciplines, from different regions, but also open science to society. And then when we think about the monitoring, we also have to think about all of these different aspects. Another complexity is in the, in the sense that the recommendation defines these key pillars of open science going way beyond open access to scientific publications. So there is a part on open scientific knowledge that includes scientific publications, open access to scientific publications, open research data, open educational resources, open source software, source code, and also open hardware. We also have open science infrastructures, but also these other two pillars, equally important, open dialogue with other knowledge systems, um, meaning opening the dialogue with indigenous knowledge holders or uh, traditional knowledge holders with marginalized scholars, and also this open engagement with other societal actors through actions like citizen and participatory science or scientific volunteering. So again, when thinking about monitoring, we do need to, at least from UNESCO point of view, look into all of these pillars of open science. And some of these are actually, um, uh, have not really yet been monitored or assessed uh, in a systematic way. Then another part, which is critical, again, in the way we are gonna monitor open science are these values and principles. So. This is the part that was actually the most negotiated in a way when we were developing the recommendation, because this is really where the heart of open science is. So what are the values of open science? What are the principles that each open science practice needs to adhere to? The values include quality and integrity of, of, of knowledge, of course, but also collective benefit, equity and fairness, and diversity and inclusiveness. So any monitoring of open science from our perspective should really look into these values and try to kind of look outside of the box and act outside of the box and try to find ways to assess, monitor, uh, measure uh, the impacts around these values and these values um, by themselves. Then again, the, the recommendation goes into the different um, areas of action, going from common understanding of open science to developing and enabling a policy environment for open science, investing in infrastructures, capacity building, aligning incentives for open science, promoting innovative approaches at different stages of the scientific process, so not only at the outcome, but really in the entire cycle of, of scientific process, and then the promotion of international and multi-stakeholder collaboration in the context of open science and again in the uh, with a focus to reducing the digital technological and knowledge gaps so under each and every of these areas of actions there is a series of actions that are proposed to our member states and in the context of the monitoring of the recommendation we implementation of the recommendation we also have to make sure that we capture the activities that are happening in different countries uh, around these different areas of actions and proposed actions so, of course, looking into open science in such a broad uh, context and in such a comprehensive way, looking into monitoring of the implementation of this recommendation is really a complex um, and multi-layered process. We need inputs from different groups of stakeholders. We need both qualitative and quantitative indicators. We need the responsible design of those indicators, uh, the use of relevant um, indicators, data sources. We need openness also in the monitoring itself and the use of open data sources, the use of non open, non-proprietary and transparent infrastructures whenever that is possible. We need to look into the synergies and overlaps with existing monitoring frameworks for science technology innovation in particular for educational systems as well. Um, and in general, there needs to be a multi-stakeholder participatory approach that includes scientific community, but also many other different actors of open science. And what the even in the recommendation, it is said that the monitoring of the implementation of the recommendation needs to be kept under the public um, oversight. So a, a very complex process that we have asked um, 
a working group that we have constituted together. And we have asked this working group to help us understand what would be the best approach uh, for the open science monitoring, for the monitoring of the recommendation, what kind of tools we can also use to monitor the uh, um, the implementation of the recommendation. And what came out of this group is really the need, again, for this multi-layered um, um, reporting and monitoring process where there would be a survey um, that would be sent to member states that looks really into the different areas of action and across the different pillars of the recommendation that is sent to member states every four years and that they have to kind of uh, report every four, every four years. Right now, we are in a process of uh, finalizing this uh, survey. Uh, it went through a, a series of iterations and comments within our working group. And by the way, these working groups are open. So this is an open call also to join our, our, our working groups, including the working group on, on monitoring. And the idea is that um, our member states will actually have a look at the survey uh, in the spring edition of our executive board. They will agree on the survey and then they will have a year and a half, more or less, to be able to fill in those surveys. And we will be having some workshops in different regions to help the focal points um, fill in the surveys. Uh, as I said, a, a lot of the emphasis in the survey is on the specific actions that are mentioned in the recommendation, keeping in mind the different pillars of open science, keeping in mind also the values and principles of open science. But then, uh, as our working group said, this survey would also need to be um, um, complemented with an output analysis based on open and inclusive global databases. And we are right now looking into, you know, what exact aspects of open science should be measured, what aspects of open science can be measured, what indicators should be used, which data sources would be needed, and what are the gaps in available data sources. So we don't have the answers yet. We are very happy to have these conversations with you as well to get some insights and inputs. And we are also uh, working with the, the, the French government in an upcoming another um, meeting looking into to more the aspects of open access, open data, and open software, but we really do need to open up this discussion uh, also on other um, pillars of open science. Uh, and another part that would be necessary to have a, a good idea of where open science is, is also to have surveys with different actors and stakeholders of open science. For example, surveys with research organizations uh, to assess their open science initiatives and also some opinion surveys to researchers and experts on the values and impacts of open science. So again, lots of different bits and pieces of a global monitoring framework that we are still developing and we still need to understand exactly uh, what kind of questions we need to ask and what kind of indicators we need to develop to be able to capture um, what we really do want from open science. Just to finish this presentation, I would also like to inform you that we will be launching an open science outlook um, it's, a, it's a global publication, looks into global and regional snapshots of status and trends in open science. Uh, we have constructed also this open science outlook based on the work of the different working groups, inputs from different um, experts, and many of those that I see here in this webinar are, have also contributed, and I thank you very much for that. And this will, for us, be some kind of a baseline. Um, with the next uh, following editions of the Outlook also building on the results of the monitoring of the uh, recommendation, results of the survey, and possibly the results of the other uh, parts of the monitoring framework. So it's something that we are building currently, that we are experimenting a little bit, that we want to understand what is the best way uh, to have also this open science outlook to really reflect on where we are with open science for different regions, for different disciplines, for different actors, and are we really achieving with open science what we would like to achieve at the international level. So I'm going to stop here. I hope I didn't go too much over my time, and I'm looking forward to our discussions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna. That was very 
clear and inspiring that opens the way for um, the rest of the webinar. Before we shift to uh, Eloy, um, I would like to remind the audience that they can use the Q&A box to put their questions. There is only a very super quick question for you, Anna, and maybe we keep the, the rest of the questions for the Q&A session, question and answer session at the end. Um, could you share the draft survey instrument with the group here today? Yeah, we can we can share the 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 draft that we had presented to the last working group because it it's uh, it's what we discussed, uh, and that is more or less the survey that is going to go through internal processes. So it might be a bit different once it once it comes to the member states, but even the one that will go to member states is going to be an open document. I mean, it's uh, it will be available online, uh, so we will all be able to see what the the advances are um, in the survey. But we can already share now I'll, I'll i'll find now i'll share the the ones that we had shared with the the last meeting of the working group yeah thank you very much so maybe we can keep going on and so put your question in the q a box for the um, question and answer moment at the end of the webinar uh dear eloy so you are director of the university of minio libraries in portugal welcome on this webinar but today you will talk about the open air, open science monitor. Over to you. Thank you very much, Cecile. And uh, um, thanks uh, to LIBER, UNESCO, and La Referencia for the invitation to, to share with you uh, an overview about the, the, the activities that uh, open air is, is being developing and is currently developing regarding to, to monitoring uh, open science. I think you are seeing my slides, so I, I will I will go on. Just uh, uh, just before going deep on on the monitoring aspect, let me just uh, very briefly present Open Air for those that might not be still aware of Open Air. So we are a scholarly communication infrastructure uh, that uh, has two main components. We bring together people uh, and and advice advance the uh, technologies uh, to to uh, promote uh, uh, open science and and uh, uh, open scholarly communication ecosystem by aligning policies, uh, operating services, and and uh, capacity building through training. Uh, open air is a result of uh, several uh, projects founded since uh, two thousand and nine. And and uh, and uh, uh, from 2018 onward, we are now also a nonprofit organization that uh, has more than 50 members from uh, 36 uh, countries. Uh, last year, at the end of last year, we have developed and established our uh, 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 strategy for the next three years, so 2000, 2023, 2025. And uh, as you may see, uh, one of the five uh, strategic priorities that we have identified is precisely uh, precisely monitoring the uptake of open science policies, uh, being the others, uh, the infrastructures for open scholarly communication, uh, data and service quality, uh, responsible research and career assessment, including open science and innovation in research communication and dissemination. And uh, uh, we try to address these five strategic priorities on the three dimensions that I already uh, spoke through services uh, uh, that we provide through our infrastructure and uh, through uh, policies to, to uh, promote uh, development and alignment of, of policies and through the capacity building uh, through uh, through tra training, so uh, uh, you will we will let you will have the slides and then you can uh, consult. There is a link for the for the open air strategy for the next uh, three years. So, uh, going now uh, uh, to the topic of uh, our talk here today, uh, uh, we at Open Air we try to have a, a, a broad uh, a work on on regarding monitoring. So we want to not monitoring only a, a, a part of of, uh, of the landscape. We try to to to, to really address uh, the very the different aspects and the very uh, on a very broad way. So we try to monitor policies, uh, practices, the uptake and and the impact of of open science. And I will talk a little bit on uh, about each of these dimensions. 
So regarding uh, policies through our network, I think I didn't mention on the first slide about open air, we have a network of what we call NOADs or national open access desks uh, that now are really uh, uh, specialists on, on, on open science in each country. We uh, we have been developing uh, uh, on, on our website country pages uh, with information about the situation of uh, open access and open science in, in each country. By the way, those pages are, are being updated as we speak now. We, we have been actively uh, updating them. So you might see that uh, some are, are still in, in, in construction or, or being only available on, on a previous version. But I think in the coming weeks, uh, uh, all, uh, most, if not all, the, the national uh, country pages will be, will be available. And, and those country pages, they, they have uh, kind of uh, contextual information about, about science and technology uh, uh, um, uh, you know, policy. But uh, uh, of course, also about uh, open science policies, but also on the other two dimensions that are very important for us, that is uh, infrastructures, infrastructures uh, and services for open, for, for publications, for, for data, uh, 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 for monitoring, including, including also for, for monitoring, uh, and the, the, the open science digital skills, so capacity building and training. And we try to, to gather all this information uh, on, on national pages. I'm just showing uh, uh, you now one of the, the national pages that uh, that you can find uh, uh, in the in the open air website and again as i said uh, bear in mind that in the coming uh, weeks the, those pages are being uh, uh, updated as we as we speak also we have been involved uh, in collaboration with the european commission and the, the strategic board on the OSC observatory also that also collects information about uh, policies at different levels and for 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 at, for th those different levels uh, a national uh, 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 for research performer organization for research founders etc for for each of those we also have uh, uh, um, uh, FATS for each category uh, and uh, uh, we collect uh, uh, information uh, globally uh, at the European level, and uh, we are working on the, the, the next on the next phase to have uh, uh, also as we have on the open air uh, country pages we have over here on the OSC Observatory uh, a, a very comprehensive uh, uh, country page with all the relevant information about each country uh, collected in in one single space, and this is uh, just a, 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 a an example of what a, a page like that uh, will will look like. But uh, so monitoring policies is one of the dimensions. The other dimension, uh, one of the other dimensions is also monitoring practices. So the practices related to, to open science, the compliance with, uh, with the guidelines, standards, and best practices, and also the, the, the use, the, the existence and use of uh, infrastructure. Uh, uh, this is, uh, again, another example regarding, for instance, uh, infrastructure through uh, uh, collecting information through registries and also uh, through uh, surveys. We, we collect information about uh, uh, the, the, the situation in each, uh, in each country, uh, and uh, uh, through it also we can uh, uh, check the, the, the compliance uh, and uh, with uh, standards and guidelines and best practices. Well, again, I'm showing just a couple of examples. This is uh, information about P Portugal, about, for instance, the, the use of PIDs in, in publications or the use of uh, uh, Creative Commons uh, licenses, and also uh, other aspects like uh, the different uh, roads uh, to, to, to open access or uh, other characteristics of uh, the research objects that, uh, that people like to, like uh, the, the, the existence of, uh, of an abstract. That's uh, the example that uh, I'm showing here, but also relationship between entities and, uh, and uh, objects. But uh, uh, it is very important that we uh, don't uh, uh, just uh, stick with uh, uh, with uh, open to publications or, or, or data, but uh, uh, but it's also very important that we try to measure practices not related with with outcomes. So not the, the practices itself and not the results of those practices. So participation in citizen science activities, 
uh, 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 contribution to open educational resources, uh, 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 open source community projects, uh, open hardware, and several others uh, are also uh, uh, practices that are very important. And through the participation of open air in, in, in projects like uh, the one that I'm uh, uh, sharing now with the grasp OS, uh, we try to exactly to 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 identify uh, and and to build uh, uh, frameworks, uh, research uh, assessment frameworks, uh, and uh, and uh, open open uh, um, uh, uh, and openness profiles that can be uh, used both at uh, individual and uh, institutional level to to monitor the 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 the, the practices of of open science. And the third dimension of monitoring that we we are trying to, that we address is the the, the uptake. So and, and that is mainly through through open access and uh, uh, and fair research outcomes, and we do that using the, a very important asset uh, that Open Air has built. It's Open Air Graph that uh, now uh, collects information for more than two hundred million uh, research uh, objects and and uh, also millions of uh, 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 entities, uh, uh, organizations, uh, uh, research uh, uh, projects, uh, funding, etc. Uh, we try. We we build. We have uh, we have been building building uh, uh, dashboards through the, the monitor service uh, uh, for, for both for institutions and funders, for individual institutions, for, for uh, uh, also for uh, university alliances in, in Europe. And, and, uh, and also we have uh, been building uh, uh, the Open Science Observatory that collects uh, information on a more global and national level. And finally, uh, uh, this is it is very important that we try also to to monitor what is the impact of open science and that is really the uh, work in progress and uh, through uh, projects like pathos we have been uh, working uh, uh, to 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 identify what could be those uh, indicators and pathways that can that can be used to to assess and to monitor in the impact of uh, of open science so if you are interested uh, on this uh, uh, keep an eye on the pathos project that is still that is running uh, and uh, will be delivering some uh, results in the coming year or so uh, finally, uh, just I don't want to to go over my my time. Also, to to, to I want to highlight uh, 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 something that is, we were really very glad at Open Air that we have been awarded a, 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 a contract to develop the Irish Open Access uh, Monitor uh, by using exactly uh, uh, some of the things that uh, that we are, have been talking about. So we use the, uh, the the open data that we have from from the Open Air uh, graph to try to build a, a, a one stop shop for for all uh, uh, Irish stakeholders uh, uh, by and bringing the, the the community together uh, to 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 build a. Uh, uh, Trust and uh, 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 to, on, on this to to uh, to try to have a convergence of uh, on the indicators and also to try to to align as much as possible uh, uh, not only within the country but uh, with with the, what is happening also in Europe and the world and and having also the 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 the, the, the the desire to 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 promote and and to to stimulate innovation in in uh, in, in open access and open science. We are building uh, five dashboards. So apart from the national dashboard, there'll be dashboards for institutional repositories, for research fund organizations, for research performing organizations, and for uh, researchers. So this is a uh, work that is uh, been is starting now. And really, finally, we also. Uh, uh, are trying to monitor the, mon the, 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 the open science monitoring. So uh, uh, following our strategic priority, we have established last year uh, uh, a monitoring working group uh, through Open Air. We have working groups in the organization regarding several aspects. And this open, uh, this uh, 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 working group has um, uh, a couple of objectives. And basically is try to keep really an overview of uh, on, the, on, the, on the monitoring uh, activities in Europe and identify uh, relevant initiatives and projects that Open Air should engage with. Uh, also try to 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 uh, identify uh, and liaise with the monitoring initiatives outside Europe at uh, global level, like uh, UNESCO monitoring initiative, but also in other regions of, of the world. 
uh, uh, and uh, by doing that, uh, uh, also uh, connect the, the open air services and uh, the national institutional monitoring services that are being established and uh, participate on the discussion of for the identification of relevant indicators uh, uh, also for for, uh, for for open science and for monitoring the open science that can be used on, on open air services like the monitor and the observatory. Uh, we have already done some uh, uh, work, so we have done a survey to our members regarding the initiatives regarding monitoring uh, in, in Europe, and this is the, the results that we have collected in, in the first quarter of 2023. So there are lots of initiatives, and we know that we have, and we have already have more information. There are other initiatives in other countries like uh, Germany and Netherlands and, and others that were not, uh, that we did not collect information at that, that time at different uh, levels of, of, of maturity and, uh, uh, and building on, on that work. And we also have organized already two workshops, uh, uh, more correctly, one workshop and a panel on the last uh, Open Science Fair just last week in Madrid. And we want to, uh, uh, the, uh, the idea is to maintain an updated record of monitoring initiatives in Europe, so based on the survey, but uh, maintaining that, that information really updated. Uh, organize a new workshop on open uh, science monitoring, pro probably with some of you that are participating here uh, with, uh, in this webinar today. And uh, uh, we are very open and keen to liaise and engage and collaborate with other organizations uh, 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 in Europe and outside Europe uh, around indicators, data, tools, and different structures for open science monitoring. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Eloy. We have a question for you that we can take right now. And please, other attendees, put them in the Q&A box so we can have a chat at the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. The question maybe can be answered by you, Eloy, on the chat for everyone to see your answer. Uh, Hannelore von Haverbecke would like to know how can one join an open air working group? That might be of interest to all. So if you can have an answer shared with everyone with a link, that would be fantastic. Um, if you can send the links of the projects also, that can be good for sharing. So people, please can you keep your questions, general questions for the Q&A. We are going to hear now uh, Leticia Bracco from France. She's here on behalf of Marin Dacos, the National Chief Officer for Open Science. Maybe Leticia, you can have a word of introduction and over to you. Thank you very much. So I'm, I'm sharing my screen now. Um, and okay, no. Uh, I think it's working now. So um, I hope that you can see everything. Okay, so um, I'm very glad to be uh, with you today and to have the opportunity to talk about the French Open Science Monitor. My name is Laetitia Bracco. I work in the libraries of uh, the Université de Lorraine, which is in the northeast of France. I'm the head of the research data support and bibliometric services of my university. But today I'm here as the project manager of the French Open Science Monitor on research data and software. Indeed, I will focus my presentation on the monitoring uh, on open science beyond um, scientific publications. So first, uh, I would like to give you a short introduction about the monitoring of open access to publications as we have designed it in France. Let's start, of course, with some context. Our first important milestone in the recent history of open science in France goes back to 2018 with our first national open science plan. At the time, we didn't have a global uh, monitoring system. Therefore, it was really difficult to assess the progress of open science. All we had was our global perception. That's why in 2019, the French Ministry of Higher Education and Research in France developed the first version of the Open Science Monitor, which was really basic at the time. 
In my university, we, we were open science enthusiasts uh, since many years, and we seized the opportunity to monitor also the progress of open science um, among our uh, institution. We were then in 2020, the first uh, institution in France to reuse the code of the ministry and with some adaptations to have a local monitor. Our own code was also open source and really quickly, many other in universities and research organizations followed us. In 2021, the national monitor was radically enhanced with lots of new indicators and uh, development dedicated to health. The same year, uh, the second national open science plan was published with the ambitious goal to have 100% of open access scientific publications in 2030. Finally, in 2021, it was also the beginning of the research data and software extension of the national monitor. The local monitors beginning to grow by the day we created a users club with the ministry, with today nearly 250 members. In 2023, the first indicators on research data and software were released. What were the requirements of the French National Open Science Monitor? We want it, of course, to be consistent with our policy. That's why, of course, we didn't we couldn't use proprietary databases such as Web of Science or Scopus. The metadata had to be open so that everyone, and especially public institutions, could reuse the results of the monitor. The code, of course, had to be open source. Updates had to be regular to monitor open science through time. And of course, to get the attention of stakeholders, indicators had to be visual and, well, easy. So how do you fulfill uh, these requirements? Well, with a little bit of work, of course. Affiliation metadata could be retrieved from three um, main open metadata sources, PubMed, Crossref, and our National Open Access Archive, AL. But that was not enough uh, to get a consistent corpus of the French publications. The ministry had to build a special software, crawlers of publications, web pages, and an automatic detection of countries. What do you do next with this metadata? To characterize the open access status, Unpaywall was the best solution. But on top of that, the ministry created a classifier so that open access publications could be sorted between open archive, open access, publisher, open access, and both. And finally, to obtain the thematic classification, the national databases, Francis and Pascal, were used to train the model of automatic classification, thus allowing to have indicators by discipline. Our latest release last year shows that at the national level, 67% of our publications are in open access, which is a fair share, but that can, of course, be improved. Since 2018, this rate has progressed of 29 points, which underlines the efficiency of national and international policies on open access. Of course, this global number hides great disparities between disciplines. If, for example, the mathematicians are open access champions, it is different for other disciplines. However, we can see a global progress amongst all scientific fields. With the COVID crisis, the ministry chose to, had to add special indicators regarding health in 2021. One of them is related to the opening of clinical trials, which, uh, which has a global rate of 57% of sharing. The opening rates of doctoral theses in France show a great openness for this type of publication. But as you can see so far, we only have addressed the question of open access to publications, whether they are articles, book chapters, chapters, 
uh, thesis or clinical trials. How did we move from an open access monitor to an open science monitor? We must ask ourselves what should be considered as a scientific production, globally speaking. And with the development of research data repositories and the long tradition of open software forges, more and more voices advocated for a renewal of individual research assessment. And of course, if we want to value these other scientific productions, it is essential to bring them into the open science monitoring. In 2021, the ministry asked to Université de Lorraine uh, as the leader of the local monitors community to lead the project of the National Open Science Monitor regarding research data sets and software. We were soon joined by INRIA, which is the main French public research organization in informatics. And we obtained a funding from the European Recovery Plan for a project which has cost so far um, nearly 600,000 of euros. So why did the project need so much funding? Well, because we had to address a lot of challenges. Firstly, technical ones. There is no global database for research data and software. There are too many identifiers uh, for data sets. We have data site DOIs, of course, but also accession numbers, entry numbers, and all kinds of different identifiers. And at the same time, we, all, we also have too few identifiers um, for research data, because a lot of data repositories still don't attribute persistent identifiers, as well as for software. Uh, for now, software heritage ideas are still not very common. This is for technical challenges. Now for factual challenges, there is still a low or even very low awareness from researchers on the value of these research products. As a result, many, uh, still many don't see the interest of depositing their research data or software on public repositories. So in order to face these challenges, we adopted a dual method. The first two years of the project were de dedicated to what we call the publication approach. Having gathered the French corpus of publications metadata, as I've explained before, we first had to download as many full texts of publications as possible. Of course, we weren't able to download everything because we didn't have subscriptions for every editor, but still we could download more than 60% of the corpus. With the progress of open access to publications, we hope to see this number increasing every year. We then applied machine learning techniques on the full texts to detect and characterize mentions to data sets and software. And finally, we were able to compute indicators, which I will present later. So firstly, our indicators were focused on research data and software mentioned within publications. The second part of the project on which we are currently working is called the repository approach. In this side of the project, we focus on data sets deposited in repository and not necessarily linked to publications. So how do we detect uh, data sets and software mentions? We developed an, an innovative approach based this time upon the use of machine learning tools. For this project, we use a tool developed by Patrice Lopez, who is the leader of Science Miner. The first tool is Grobid, which is transforming full texts into structural files. We then applied SoftSight to detect software mentions and data sets to detect data set mentions. Another challenge was also, of course, to build a huge pipeline for the downloading of the full texts and their processing with the three machine learning algorithms. The characterization of mentions is crucial. Indeed, we want to know if data or software was really used, for instance, and not just mentioned. We therefore choose a three-level characterization. 
Firstly, was the mentioned data set or software really used in the research work? Secondly, if it was mentioned, was it produced or created by the authors or reused from a previous work? And thirdly, if the data set or software was created by the authors, is it shared? And by sharing, we mean actual sharing. Availability upon reasonable request is clearly not enough. In order to improve the learning corpus, we perform manual annotations upon dozens of publications. For example, on this slide, you can see an extract from a publication in which the soft site software uh, detected the mention of uh, the GPower software. Thanks to the context, we could determine if this software was used, created, and shared by the authors of the article. So what are first results? Since 2013, we can see here that more and more publications are mentioning the use of datasets, reaching 79% in 2021. Among the publications whose authors mention the use of data, we can see that a fair share produces their own data. This is a case of 33% of the publications in which the use of data is mentioned. The third indicator is the most important and considers publications for which the sharing of data is mentioned. Indeed, this one shows how many authors share the data they are actually producing and mentioning. In 2021, we reached a score of only 22%. There is still a long, long way to go. Indeed, we can set the objective to 100% of shared data sets even if it's in closed access. So to wrap up the methodology, we can say that we had a funnel approach. Amongst all the publications, we first identified which one mentioned the use of data. Amongst the publications in which data usage was mentioned, we identify which one had created their own data. And amongst these publications, we isolated the ones mentioning the opening of their data. The exact same procedure was followed for software. Similarly to datasets, only 20% of publications mention the sharing of the software produced by their authors. We encountered several difficulties and, and identified some attention points during the process. Firstly, the methodology is very costly in terms of budget and time. Indeed, the access to PDF can be really difficult, as I've mentioned before. What's more, natural language processing techniques are compute intensive and require a lot of resources. Secondly, our methodology covers only English publications for now. 87% of the French scientific publications of the corpus are in English, but still, we want to cover also French-speaking publications. Now to finish, let's have a look at local monitors, which are ever increasing and more and more popular amongst universities and research organizations in France. Since the first local version of the monitor published in my university in 2020, 177 universities, research organizations and research units have started their open science monitor. Indeed, a common methodology has been set up for everyone, allowing to compare the results. The indicators are thus harmonized at the national scale. There is a very strong dynamics with an ever-growing community. And the Users Club, created in 2022, counts more than 200 individual members. So what are our perspectives for the future? Now that the publication approach is completed, even if we need to download more full texts, we will focus on the repository approach. We are currently analyzing the data, set, data site dump and isolating the French data sets, thanks to the attribution agencies and to the origin of the repositories. Another perspective is to improve the full texts for data and software so that they can be less time and resource consuming. 
We will also focus on the processing of French language publications through more manual annotations to train the new model. And finally, we are currently strengthening our relationships with international stakeholders, of course, UNESCO, but uh, also OpenAlex, Koki, or for example, the CWTS, who recently stated that the open science methods should be applied to their ranking. Thank you very much for your attention. And I am at your disposal if you have any question. Thanks a lot, Leticia. So that's really interesting to see how we move from a European perspective to a national method and tool. So uh, I hope this will give you some ideas. Before we move to Samini Maki, just a quick question, Leticia. Uh, maybe you can answer to all in the chat. Uh, is the code of the science minor openly available? So if yes, can yes, you share course. the URL, please? And we will see you again with other questions from different colleagues at the Q&A session. Thank you. Perfect. Sami, over to you from Finland. Thank you, Ceci. So, uh, my presentation looks like this. I'm going to the first slide. Doesn't seem to work. So let me start again. Sorry about this. No. Okay, good. So many thanks for the invitation. Uh, my title of the presentation is Finnish focus on, on open science monitoring. Uh, my name is Sami Linimaki. I work at the Ministry of Education and Culture. I work with different topics related to higher education policy and science policy. Very briefly, Finland in a nutshell, a population of five and a half million people. Uh, we are a member of EU and NATO. We are officially the world's biggest consumer of coffee and uh, we are officially the world's happiest country in the world. And it is unclear if these two are connected to each other, coffee and happiness. So this is what we have in Finland. We have a national research information system called research.fi. Um, it gathers, it pools, it links all the information, all things related to research we do in Finland. Uh, we have different types of funders. We have two national funders, Business Finland. We have the Research Council of Finland. Then we have private research funders. They all pull data into this site. And um, in addition, uh, we use existing uh, databases uh, related to, for example, uh, these uh, higher education institutes, uh, uh, information and data gathering for the use of, uh, of uh, Funding, uh, we have a funding model for the for the higher education institutes, and uh, we we need plenty of data in order to to conduct that. In addition, we have a, a national open science coordinator, uh, the Federation of Finnish Learned Societies. They operate also uh, uh, in data gathering, uh, and uh, their model. On, on monitoring open science is also, and the results of this monitoring are also available on this site. And I'll, I'll address this, uh, this monitoring aspect uh, later on. For now, uh, on a national level, uh, this is the state of open access in Finland. Uh, it looks like this. Uh, we, have, we have improved over the years. Uh, the share of open access publications has uh, risen. Uh, both at the university level and also at the universities of applied sciences level. Uh, the, the number of publications has increased also a bit. Uh, so, but uh, all in all, it, the development looks good in this sense. And uh, notice that this, this data here presented uh, is actually from the national database. And uh, it, it includes more 
more publications than, for example, Web of Science data. And for this reason, uh, we, we do get the different views and, uh, and we, we have to understand also the differences here. And when going to the Web of Science data, it looks like this. We can draw many, many, many conclusions from these charts. Uh, for example, that uh, open access publications uh, in, in, in general scientific journals uh, is almost fully saturated, reaching close to 100%. But for example, in humanities, uh, very much expected that they are kind of like uh, bottom of the pile. Uh, they, are, they are still improving, but uh, at a very, very slower pace than, than, than some other fields. And uh, uh, so very much expected. Uh, and again, notice that this is the Web of Science data. Uh, these uh, frequency counts here mentioned, they, they are fractional instead of, uh, instead of this uh, previously shown national data gathering where the frequencies are not fractional. Again, using this same database web of science um, and, and looking as, at the scientific impact of open access publications, we can see that uh, very much expected on the left side, this top 10 index is much better in open access publications than in non-open access publications. Uh, on this right-hand side, we see that uh, top 10 index publications uh, in hybrid journals, they, they, they score well, but uh, this also shows a worrisome general trend that uh, uh, publishing in hybrid access is, 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 is uh, kind of like, uh, pays off in the sense that it gets, it gets uh, better top 10 indexes if used that way. And uh, in general, there is a downward slope in all these uh, lines, possibly due to uh, the uh, rise of the Chinese, uh, on, the, on the number of the Chinese publications coming, coming more and more. So that was the, National view uh, going to this uh, monitoring uh, uh, model uh, by the Federation of Finnish Learned Societies, we, we, we do get the view more on the organizational level. And uh, this model uh, is, is, uh, is a very holistic exercise in the sense that, um, in the sense that it, it, it includes the latest understanding of open science, what it means in, in what sense open science is, is, is developing. And the latest additions, for example, are to do with the open educational materials. Uh, this, this works at an organizational level and uh, uh, it requires a survey for the organizations. Uh, so based on the survey and based on the uh, available data, to, to support the survey, the, we get these this scores. I'll, I'll show you examples later on uh, so that uh, we, we can understand how they perform, what are the maturity in open science and, and uh, in a holistic way. So uh, the principles, underlying principles are here. Um, this same model can be used for research institutes. So all in all, I mean, research performing organizations are the target target organizations. Um, uh, it very much builds on existing policy papers. It, it is constantly up, updated, uh, uh, but I can imagine the next phase uh, possibly involving uh, uh, provisions on, on responsible evaluation practices, for example. And uh, in the sense that, um, it's a, it's, a, it's a very rising theme and very important theme uh, we have on hand at the moment. Um, so going forward, we have a set of policy documents on a national level. Uh, they target different aspects of open science. 
and uh, some of them are recommendations and some of they that complement the policies but all in all i mean it's it's uh, it's it forms this type of uh, hierarchy and where we have on the top a declaration with the common vision uh, that the community itself actually has has uh, decided on and so very much a community driven exercise here and uh, very much very much uh, uh, well adapted also in the community itself um, so like i said i mean done by the community for the community itself uh, this requires uh, some sort of uh, system to work and uh, we have a steering group we have expert panels uh, all the, they work all pro bono they don't get compensation for their work uh, the, the only people who get compensation are the staff at the federation of finnish learning society so so this this is very cost efficient way to to kind of like uh, involve uh, stakeholders and and uh, kind of like uh, from the bottom up way you know in the sense that the community itself is deciding on on these these uh, visions and, and these these policies so the, the, there is a history behind this uh, previously the previous rounds that this uh, monitoring exercise has been conducted they were conducted by the ministry of education and culture uh, so that formed this this basis basis that uh, these these uh, these uh, newer rounds have been have been uh, formed and um, in in the sense that uh, that we we have also improved along the way now it is much more holistic than than it used to be in the earlier rounds so problems arise it uh, uh, and and we are constantly improving on this also uh, so like I said i mean the moni monitoring exercise relies very heavily on the survey conducted and because for the reason that there is rather scarcely reliable data available and that data mostly only on publishing what we have on hand but nonetheless i mean we have we have uh, uh, results to show for you and, and a few ideas for the preparation for the next round so uh in in the, this last round uh, in conducted in 2022 we got uh, very happy response rate from the organizations uh, excellent rates actually and uh, excellent results also in the sense that uh, the majority of the higher education institutes uh, reach the top two levels in their maturity uh, in open science and uh, whereas the research institutes uh, it's kind of like twofold in the sense, but uh, possibly because the reason would be that uh, research institutes uh, are not all so research intensive in the sense they, they operate uh, on, on different uh, areas and, and some of them conduct way much more research than some others. There might be also other reasons for this, but uh, on, the first, first ideas that come to mind are, are these. The results show uh, at the university level that uh, the education, open education, uh, kind of like uh, segment, is is still kind of like developing. Uh, the publishing has has almost uh, reached uh, satisfying results. Uh, data and infrastructure seem okay too. Culture for open scholarship uh, is is uh, more more or less in line. Uh, half of the uh, universities reach the highest level, but uh, open educational resources and the education sector in this uh, survey uh, doesn't doesn't uh, excel that much. Then. Um, 
what we can do with these results, we can we can uh, we can analyze these by sector. These are results for the universities, all the all of them, and we can see where uh, what sector they they perform at at what level in comparison to the uh, for example uh, 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 other sectors and uh, other other uh, segments in this survey. This is the most useful use case I can imagine for these this, uh, results. This is the organizational level. And uh, this shows uh, in one glance how this organization scores in relation to the national average. And uh, it also shows their um, progress in, in this open publication uh, over the years, and uh, and in in this sense, I mean, these can be used, and these are actually background material when 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 conducting uh, uh, negotiations between higher education institutes and and the Ministry of uh, Education and Culture. So uh, indirectly, these these are also are linked to the funding, and, and in that sense, I mean, these these are important data and important uh, to have them. So, I mean, uh, lessons learned. Uh, in short, the survey is, is everything. It is crucial to conduct a survey and it is crucial to conduct a survey uh, in, 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 in the, uh, let's say, uh, quality way in the sense that uh, we, we get quality answers also. So, like it says here, uh, time spent on revising uh, pays off. And uh, well, finalizing the monitoring model uh, is, is, is very much encouraged. So, so uh, it takes time, it takes some effort, but in the end, uh, it's all about the survey. And uh, the survey kind of reflects on the quality of the, of the answers and, 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 and the results that we can conclude in the end. And uh, well, I mean, this is kind of like a moving target, like open science is, uh, we, we cannot stay put. We, we have to keep uh, developing constantly. And um, here we have a mind map on, on, on the next phases for the 2024 monitoring exercise. And the data data uh, is possibly the um, one one uh, new element we want to uh, focus more on we we don't have enough information on on available open data and uh, so that's that's work to to, to uh, complement com, complement uh, in the in the near future many thanks Thank you, Sami. Thank you all. A quick question for Sami before we move to Q&A. Uh, hi, Sami. You said your monitor is not used by policy to make decision. Would you like it to be used this way or not? Maybe we can give a short answer and we will open the Q&A session on how we use this kind of tools for policies or for decision. Well, it, it is used in the sense that, I mean, we see trends that happen and uh, that's, that's the best use I can imagine. Uh, uh, we, can, we can, for example, understand uh, how much nationally we should spend on the APCs or how much nationally we should spend on, 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 uh, on, on uh, research infrastructures and um, these um, national research infrastructures that, that would kind of like uh, uh, help the publishing of national papers, for example. And um, so it, it, it is used in, in, a, in a roundabout way, uh, but uh, yeah, direct uses, why not? But we have to, we have to keep uh, thinking more on how, how and what type. Okay, so please panelists uh, and uh, Anna, Anna and Julien, please open your cameras. Welcome back everyone. 
uh, maybe we can start with opening this question and then we will have one question for Eloy. He answered, but people cannot see the answer. It was in writing, so we will redo it uh, and then move uh, with a question to Leticia. So um, who would like to start first with this uh, articulation between the tool and building a policy or driving decision, helping decision? How can how can we see that? Did you use this in France also? How do you, how are you using the open air monitor for this? I yeah, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear the end. In the, in France, are there any use uh, made by uh, institutions or country? Um, starting with the tool, the Open Science Monitor, to drive decision or to build a policy that you are aware of? Yeah, so in France, um, the Open Science Monitor was clearly designed to monitor uh, after uh, the release of the first national Open Science Plan. So therefore, it's closely linked. And um, as a result, with more and more local monitors being implemented in institutions and research organizations, we can observe that some um, organizations choose, for example, to focus uh, their efforts in training um, towards specific uh, disciplinary communities. Um, for example, uh, at the beginning in chemistry, we could see that um, the open access rates were a bit lower than other disciplinarity communities and it allowed us to enhance uh, our uh, support for this research community. Just one example. And Eloy, do you have other examples of the uh, usage that has been made of the open air monitor for building a complete policy? Or do you think it was just part of a strategy? How do you see that? Uh, and these, these services are quite new, so they are being used for, for a couple of years. And I think, but I, I think the, uh, as we have seen in, in several places, both uh, tools and policies uh, must, uh, must uh, uh, come together. And, uh, and the monitoring part uh, will not only provide uh, data about uh, about the, the, the compliance with uh, with policies or the progress uh, with with policies, but but also to try to understand where eventually there are gaps or problems or or, or things that need to be addressed as, as also it was mentioned now uh, through capacity building and training. So again, as we uh, I think the the three components that we have been uh, uh, working in, in open air on. Uh, infrastructures uh, like like monitoring infrastructures policy and, and capacity building they are re they really need to work to work to work together well thank you i know eloy that you need to leave us a little in advance so maybe if you agree uh, can i share with everyone in the chat the answer you provided to a question by bang bianca online can i share it I in the chat openly that. Okay, so I thank you very that. much. I, I already, I already copy paste the answer from the Q and A to 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 the chat. Okay, so uh, maybe um, we won't elaborate uh, on, on this one. Uh, we have a a question um, for Leticia and Sami concerning the open data indicator is being open, meaning technically open. Is it sufficient or does the definition also look at licenses related to the data set legally open? Um, I, I can start if you want or Sami, uh, as you wish. <laughs> okay, yes, so in the French project, um, uh, as I've said, uh, we are able to detect uh, automatically in the full text of publications uh, the mention of data availability statement, but uh, we didn't use that because um, it's clearly not uh, a real proof of opening data sets. So um, we 
we run directly inside the publications to see mentions of usage, uh, creation, sharing of data sets, whether it's implicit or explicit. And uh, of course, it's best if we have uh, a link, um, but it can also it can also be as a mention of uh, an accession number, for example, uh, to get this result, we used the data set with this accession number. We don't have a link, but we have a proper reference. And it's fine by us. Uh, for now, we are not at the level of um, the detection of licenses, but it's something we definitely want to investigate uh, for next year. Um, and it will be easier when we have um, uh, put together the two approaches, the publication approach and repository approach, because by linking the two, uh, we hopefully we will be able to um, assemble uh, licenses with data set mentions. Any compliments from you, Eloy? Sorry, I I must admit I was distracted. I was I was writing my my goodbye message on the chat. So oh, uh, so well, we we won't keep you longer. Thank you, Eloy. Uh, we are close to the end of this webinar, so we are taking one last question. Nos acercamos al final de este seminario web. Vamos a aceptar una última pregunta. You can see it online uh, from Hannelor uh, van Haverbeke. Um, so I will read it so that everyone can hear it and feel free to react, uh, all of you. Um, are we not running the risk of falling in the same trap as with the whole metrics discussion? Choosing for metrics that are available and easy rather than indicators that truly reflect a research monitoring question and are possibly much more complex. Panelists, your turn. Anna. Yeah, I, I can start because I think uh, this is exactly the questions that we've been asking ourselves. Uh, of course, it will take longer uh, to develop something different and something really out of the box, but it is definitely something that is necessary. At the same time, for new types of monitoring, questions, metrics, ways of assessing for it to be accepted, valued, used. We also need to kind of at the same time work a little bit on the shift in the culture uh, in the entire scientific system. So these are the two things that kind of go, uh, go hand in hand. But one of the things that we really are underlying in our open science outlook is that for the moment we don't have the metrics and we don't have indicators that are actually adapted to really measure the impacts of open science as we would like to measure them uh, or to express them or to illustrate them. Uh, more and more what we see is actually there is more in terms of different case studies and exchanges of experiences that this evaluation and um, and assessments might work uh, in the future. And here and there, we have a combination of quantitative and qualitative indicators. But definitely just using the existing metrics to try to measure something else is, is not going to work. So definitely we have to, at the same time, have a reflection and push it forward towards something that is different from what we have, while in the meantime also trying to see what we can assess also with the existing metrics as well. So it's a bit of a complex question uh, or answer because it's a complex question um, as well. But from our point of view, indeed, we, we cannot be content with what we have now and try to somehow adapt it to the open science framework. It is never going to work. So we have to, in parallel, work on something different and something new. Yeah. Well, I suppose this question will raise many answers and discussion, but we are getting to the end of this webinar. So please keep in touch. You could see the different links, URLs. You will see people on the social networks. Um, thank you for this answer. We will stay online with the host, UNESCO, LIBER, and La Referencia. And please, Julien, if you have 
concluding remarks to share before we say goodbye. We would be very happy to hear you. Yes, thank you very much, Cecile. Thank you to all the, the speakers and, uh, and all the people who uh, were attending this online meeting. Uh, I will take a few minutes to uh, for some quick concluding remarks to try to uh, highlight the, the major lessons learned during this seminar. So it will be something in perspective uh, with my own understanding of, uh, of, of, of this uh, quite interesting and rich topic. So, um, so first of all, um, um, each speaker has stressed what I, I can call the importance of monitoring open science. Every speaker with a different perspective, of, of course, but it clearly shows that open science is, a mature, is at a mature stage now. Some years ago, uh, doing and learning by doing was priority number one. And monitoring was not in the scope yet, because as a matter of fact, we did not have so much to monitor. Monitoring open science has progressively become an important aspect for decision makers at each level, from the local landscape to the global one. And that is fortunate because it means open science is included in the policies prepared, implemented and evaluated. A second important element is the scope of monitoring open science. At the beginning, monitoring open science was mainly focused on publications because open science started with open access and more specifically open access journals. Monitoring open access publications was therefore a kind of a low hanging fruit compared to other open science products like data and so on. Presentation have showed that monitoring open access publications may be seen as a regular business nowadays, but it is still a challenge to monitor other products like open access data, for instance. Though it is a difficult and complex way, my understanding is that expansion of the scope will be central in the coming years, where collaborations will be key issues. The third important lesson is the coverage of monitoring open science. The needs are at every level, local, national, international or regional, whatever we call it, and global. The challenge there will certainly be to articulate the different layers and initiatives so that, on one hand, local decision makers can build their strategy on tools and indicators tailored to their local needs that are different from one to another. And on the other hand, Everyone can rely on common definitions and tools so that institutions and countries can compare and harmonize the effects of their open science policies in the lingua franca of open science. Last lesson I'd like to mention today is what we can call the ambition of monitoring open science. Ambition was indeed quite limited some years ago, but open science has become an important tool to evaluate not only practices, but also uptake and policies and even impact, not only on higher education and research, but more broadly speaking on society. It is indeed an important responsibility for people like librarians, engineers, IT staff, technicians who work on monitoring open science on a daily basis. They will need the full support of decision makers. No serious monitoring can be produced at low level cost. And also a fine understanding of what monitoring can do and what it cannot do in order to avoid what I call the Shanghai ranking effect, where some decision makers expect an all in one simple, not to say simplistic indicator to compare universities that are obviously not comparable. Moreover, using a tool that has not been made and designed for that. So, to finish my concluding, concluding remarks, I'd like to thank a lot again all the speakers. I do hope you enjoyed this joint Liber UNESCO La Referencia webinar, and I hope you will have a nice evening uh, or a nice day for people from another part of the world than Europe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Goodbye. Have a nice day and thank you.
panelists. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.